Imagine suffering from years of debilitating, paralyzing anxiety and being told by your doctor, you, you need therapy, that's what you need, only to discover the doctor was wrong and there was something far more serious going on. Well, that's what happened to teenager Jason Mizrahi. Watch. Jason Mizrahi still remembers the moment nearly a decade ago he experienced his first attack. I was at my sister's birthday party and I get this real crazy indescribable feeling. So I started freaking out. I would like breathe in and get this kind of weird sensation. Chasen's mother took him to the doctor. Seeing nothing in the scans, the doctor told Chasen he suffered from anxiety and should see a therapist. For years, he saw one therapist and then another. All were perplexed. Chasen was outgoing and had lots of friends. He didn't seem to have typical anxiety symptoms. I'd always say, I have normal teenager stuff. Even with the therapy, Chasen's debilitating panic attacks continued, triggered, it seemed, by nothing. It would happen on the bus. I would get a call from the school nurse. It wasn't normal. After years of attacks, Chasen's mother decided to listen to her gut and push for more medical tests, enlisting the help of Dr. John Bukvar. The description of his panic attack was so reliable, three per month, in a very clustered fashion. I knew right away that those weren't panic attacks, in the classic sense. There was a lesion or a mass in the brain. An MRI showed Bukvar was right. Chasen had a brain tumor pressing on his temporal lobe, an area of the brain responsible for triggering feelings of panic. Shortly after Chasen's diagnosis, doctors operated. For Chasen, news that doctors had found a brain tumor, while frightening, was a relief. The relief came that we knew what it was. The tumor was non-cancerous, and today, with it removed, Chasen is symptom-free. Doctors call him a walking example of the life-saving power of a mother's intuition. Trust yourself, and don't stop until you feel that you have the right answer. So we're back now with Chasen Mizrahi and his mother, Jennifer. Chasen was convinced by his doctor that his debilitating panic attacks were all in his head. Well, they were wrong, and mom had a feeling all along. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I didn't just have brain surgery, though. <laughs> doing great. Doing amazing. And have the panic attack attacks completely stopped? Since my surgery, even prior to it, perfect. 100% not even anything. The first sign of this, Jennifer, was when he was how old? He was around 13, and a little before he was 13, and something happened. He had, it just was a weird thing that happened to him. Something happens once, you think it's just a kid thing. A little strange to see, but didn't really think so much of it. But of course, I called the pediatrician anyway, and I explained what I saw, and he kind of, shrugged it off and I was of course happy with that you want to if someone's going to tell you it's nothing don't worry about it we have enough things That's to worry you about hear. you're like okay sounds good to me did he ever get any sort of brain scan back then in the 13 year old range nothing okay nothing. so they, they just chalked it up to anxiety yes so you you say you you did not feel anxious never so the big thing was I went to therapy for a really long time. It was a weekly occurrence. I would go and talk. It was like generalized, just talking therapy, you know, talking about what's going on in your life, like things that might be causing you stress or trouble in your life. And obviously, like every normal person, stuff goes on in life. So I would talk about that. But what it came down to was the therapist would say to me, OK, so how does this make you feel? Like, does this stress you out? And I would say, in my opinion, this really doesn't bother me. I'm a super easygoing guy, just is what it is, and I don't let it bother me. And she would say to me, I understand what you're saying, but what I think is deep down inside, you're actually saying to yourself that it does really bother me, it's subconscious, that it's actually really <laughs> bothering you. You repressed it all, and Rep you're like, I'm, I'm good. Repressed it so much, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> And so what, what are you thinking when you're hearing all this? Like, oh, if we could just get him to come out with it, these panic attacks would stop or what? You know, Jason, he's my third kid. I've been <laughs> through this before. He is not the most, I mean, he's so opposite of anxious that I never 
believed he was, you know, I'm like, could he possibly be so anxious? And I just don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, that was where we were sent. That was the direction we went to. And like, you care about your kids. If someone says, you know, he needs to go, he needs to go, he went, but I dragged him. He, I mean, it's a teenage boy. It's really the last thing they really want to do. You're the right. parent. I was like, you're going and this is what we're going to do. So then things started to get worse with the three panic attacks a month. Every 28 days you were going through this and you decide, I'm, I'm going to question. I'm, I'm questioning this. And w J Jason's doctors are here with us now. I don't want to introduce them. They're, they're his new doctors who removed his tumor um, from Lenox Hill Hospital, Dr. John Bookvar, uh, and also Derek, Dr. Derek Chong. Welcome to you. Thanks. Dr. Bookvar. <laughs> How? In that tape spot, you say the clusters of the panic attacks made it clear to you it was not anxiety. How? Well, anxiety disorder can mimic a lot of things. And when he started telling me about the repetitiveness and the sequence of these attacks, anxiety doesn't know to come three times a month. And the brain can actually fire with frequency. And that told me that this is more likely seizure activity than true anxiety. So there, you can get a tumor on a part of your brain, non-cancerous, thank goodness, that controls panic, that controls anxiety? Absolutely. In fact, where his tumor was part of the amygdala and hippocampus is where your anxiety center is. So it all made sense once we got that MRI scan. So it was, w would that be described then as an actual panic attack or just it mimicked a panic attack? It essentially is his brain firing abnormally to uh, bring about panic and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So yes, he was having a panic attack, but it had an organic uh, cause to it. What would you recommend? Because you know there's going to be millions of parents out there right now who are like, I knew it, right. you know, or people who suffer from anxiety now wondering whether they have a brain tumor. So to them, what do you say? Right. So you don't have a brain tumor, most likely. Um, the only thing I can say is you're your own best advocate. And all of us are, have to be an advocate for ourselves in healthcare. And you, you're the, you know your body better than anyone, perhaps Maybe your mother does too, fortunately. <laughs> um, but no, be, be your own advocate. Maybe bring a second person with you to a doctor's office. You're not, there are other doctors who may be more specialized in the symptoms or uh, disease that you're suffering from. And it's okay to get that second opinion, but be your own advocate. Be educated about your symptoms. The internet is a, is a good and bad way to get information. Very bad. bad. Or seek what? that opinion. <laughs> you know how, what, goes, what happens on the internet, you think you have everything. <laughs> How's your life changed? So since the surgery, I'm back at school this year. Um, I, over the summer, as soon as my surgery was over, my biggest goal was to go back to the summer camp that I've been going since I was five years old. It was my 13th summer. I wanted to go back and be a lifeguard. It was the summer camp Dr. Bookvar went to, his dad went to, he sends his kids. It's just in the family forever. And it's my favorite place in the, my, in the world, his favorite place in the world. And it's amazing. So I was able to go back, be a lifeguard, and just go back to living a normal life. And no more therapy? No more therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.